that what a great group of people are so fun to be. Hi, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Come with me as I wander the country in search of valuable vintage, amazing antiques, and cool collectibles. We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique malls, shops, and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go. So I am here at the Antique Marketplace of Lemoyne. I'm really excited about it. I'm doing an appearance with some people I think are pretty cool, and I think you're going to enjoy them too. So let's go in and see. We are getting set up here and there is a crowd forming, although they're mostly outside. And you can see, don't hide, Dagny, come on. Yeah. <laughs> you can see I am here with some illustrious fellow travelers of mine. There's Jocelyn, crazy lamp lady, and Dagny from Flying Pig Thrifts, and Drew. Oh, and we are watching a car just barely get in past the building. This may turn into a drive through event. So Jocelyn invited me to be the appraiser at this really fun meet and greet in Pennsylvania, and of course I said yes. They were all hand painted or hand drawn by my dad. Oh. And they're all... How cool. Um, and they're all celebrities. And yeah. they, most of them are, they're literally signed. They're real. Oh, that's so cool. I mean, is, it, is there a, a market for anything? Well, I think they're really but interesting. So your dad's signature is yep. here, and then and then the signature. Some of them wrote. So he actually did these, and yep. then met the celebrities. Met How them, was he or them? mailed them, or mailed it, and well, they sent it back. Before my time, so he was a teenager, and he was born at 24. So, oh, wow. I don't. This is really cool. This yeah. is really interesting. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's that's. Cool I mean, you have to look and see what. Yeah, what this is are. great. So Russell Ziegler is your dad. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then he sent these after he did. So he did all of this yes. really neat oh, by yeah, himself. He so he was really good. I mean, yeah. he's a very good likenesses of these people. And then he sent them and had them signed. And of course, yeah, Cesar Romero. <laughs> Cesar Romero hit on my hand when she was really. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so he did a kick out of that one. It looks like he's oh, a couple of movie posters. posters. Yep, that's Look cool. at that. Yeah. Oh, Never give a sucker. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that is so oh, That's so, just so cool. Yeah, there's another. How are you? Oh, oh, wow. Very so, fun. I, if you ever think about it, it's over a year now. Right. Right. I live you, in Tigger you South. Find somebody that you know that's here. I think I think it's true. H-A-K-E-S. Yeah. And they're down in New York. That's close. Yeah, they do they do a full catalog and all their sales oh, yeah. so they would get advertised. And he's been in he's been in business for like fifty years yeah. and he knows antique advertising really well and autographs kind of a corollary to that. <laughs> in the 1960s at her bar where now it's funny people don't want gold on China because they don't want to wash but they love it on bar for some reason because they'll hand wash bar with it. So if you're able to keep adding to the set if you have the whole set of six then you'd probably be looking at 75 to 100. Yeah, they're really good.
absolutely the right side. It's marked LCT. There are a lot of reproductions. Yes. yes. I, how did you get this one? It's my father. My father had the answer for 30 years. I've had it for probably four years. I didn't know about the markings. Like, like how is this? I was expecting my favorite thing to be this. This is ice and This thing is what I was really curious about. It's a really great cameo. It's got a good face on it, and it's got an interesting safety catch with this bar on the back. This would be made in Italy about 1890. I still think the value on this is going to be somewhere in the $200. So she gave you a lot of nice things. Oh, look how cute. People were so generous, too. People brought us little gifts and cards and uh, Charma from Kentucky and Marilyn from Ohio and Norma from New Jersey even brought candy. People were just so sweet. It was really nice getting to meet so many viewers in person. Oh, oh, oh yes, it's a shame she didn't get the rest of the set, but what a great yeah. piece this is. It has a signature on the bottom. You thrifted this? Yes, I did. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Tell me about this. This is a thing from my grandfather from New England. Your grandfather on me. This is actually a company called Sandlinware, and they were with the Staffordshire Potteries. Uh, they lasted until probably the 1960s or so. Oh, I'd love to. Oh my gosh, have you, uh, have you, uh, you uh, or did you just like it as you were here? Uh, well, I'm starting to uh, for the collection. And, uh, the actor rings from my grandma. Oh, that's so much. We don't know. Yeah, they're three different. I was looking at the one. Those are pretty It's very heavy. And it's got all marks, so let's take a look and see if we can figure out what oh, you want to see. Yeah. That, what a great group of people that have funded this. Oh, what kind of lights do you like? I saw the box at an auction and I knew that it was special. Yes. And I looked it up and I realized how special it was. And then I bid on it and it was $5. Wow. In a box with well, great. Wow, that's fantastic. Now, you recognize the bar? Yes. Yes, and you recognize the M bar? The M, yes. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so this is Nora Talk. I just love the pieces that have the Laura Mirror Brothers mark because they were out of New Jersey and they were the M bars. So we know that this was made for the American market specifically. And it's really super the way it's handmade. You know, the Nippon market, I think it's starting to recover because people just thought it was pretty. But when the reproductions came out for a long time there were the mark was similar enough that people got scared and they just quit buying it. Yeah, you had to look up the similarities. Yeah. Yeah. You can tell the difference if you know. But for the casual collector they just got scared and the bottom really fell out for a while. Did they have any price associated with it where you looked it up? Yeah, like when I about a year ago it was like in this six hundred something. When I looked up last night it was like I seen one for four thirty five. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say somewhere in the $500 range is about where I would expect it. For Nippon, that's pretty high. I mean, there isn't a lot that goes for that price. But there's also not a lot that's made in it. Yeah, that was a Think about the difficulty of painting under all of these folds because, you know, they had to make the piece before they did the painting. It's not like they could fold it in afterwards. Right, that's, yeah. So it's, it's really great. It's one of the nicest pieces I've seen in Nippon in a really long time. She had it in her attic. Um, they 
you were at the antique store and saw one and the identical for people. sale for two hundred dollars. And she said, "Oh, that's in my attic." And so she got it out. So I don't know where I like, if she knows where she actually got it. Then. Okay, very good. And, uh, and she saw a two hundred dollar price on it. Uh, there's a. It's hard to read in here, but there is a date on here. And Drew looked at it and uh, thought it said nineteen eleven. I believe. Uh, yeah. Uh, what I find really interesting about this is Jesus died for both, and you see somewhere there's a white child and a black child in the same thing. And that's what makes this really interesting to me. This probably came from the estate of the black person that they were trying, because this would have been made during the worst period of Jim They're trying to get the point across that God loves all of that. And that stands to reason also because Nowadays, people really prize this faux painting. This is faux graining, where it's supposed to look like a wood grain, but it's painted. But at the time, that was an inexpensive way to make a print look more valuable. Two hundred dollar price is a asking price, where you saw it for sale. It was probably not far fetched, again because of the subject matter. Yeah, the that's what I was going to say. We're going to And that's an unusual pattern. And one of the American companies made it. I have to be honest, I, I'm not sure if it was Parker. I'm pretty sure it's Homer Laughlin. Homer Laughlin, thank you. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Drew knew more about this than I did. Uh, and he was the one who uh, pointed out that uh, oh, okay. these were from the stores. And I think it's really great. Now, you said you saw prices around a so, hundred and a half. So my buddy Brendan's got one in his shop in Gettysburg. Now, bear in mind, he's going to get a premium. Because he's in Gettysburg. Because he's in Gettysburg and it's Gettysburg, and it's Gettysburg address. address. Yeah. So, but he's got 150 on his. Okay, and this one has a chip, and you're not selling it in Gettysburg. So my thought is that, you know, you might be looking at half that price as a tag price because of the condition and because you're not where it would be the most valuable. Uh, this area is pretty awesome too. I can't wait to go look in. Are you having me I thought you would have. I found this actually. The line is unbelievably long. I bet, yeah. I found this at one of the booths and it's 50% off. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Then you mentioned about coming here and I'm like, oh, yeah, this is too perfect. Wow, we had so many nice people come to this meet and greet. We had people come all the way from Ohio, from Maryland, Pennsylvania, Virginia, uh, Delaware, New Jersey. I mean, it's just such a nice turnout. And what a great group of people in this YouTube community and so many really wonderful viewers. It was such a pleasure to meet a bunch of people here. And a whole bunch of them are still in line trying to buy things that they picked out at the mall. And if they left anything, I'm going to go try to find something to buy, too. And boy, are they still busy. There's still people in line. They've had a line through the back of the store all day because of this. The line has been this long in this store all day long. The cash register is around the corner. Which goes to show you that, yes, people still are interested in antiques and vintage. It's such a pleasure to see such a great turnout because I have been a believer for a long time that this generation that wants to reduce, reuse, and recycle would eventually get interested in antiques and vintage, and this shows that they really are. This is the only calm place in the place now. <laughs> And look at this, look how many people brought things for Jocelyn. She had a lovely baby shower. I don't think any of us were expecting that. Isn't that sweet of people? Everyone has just been so generous with us. And here is quite a collection. There was a lady that brought this whole tub and told the girls to split it between them. Yeah, isn't that neat? So there's a bunch of Fenton, a bunch of Lennox, and this is going to be fun to see what happens to all of this. So I'm going to go shopping because I've never actually been through the antique mall of Lemoyne, and I see some cool stuff here. This globe looks like it's probably a newer version of a black globe because of the base. Schmidt's Philadelphia beer. This is something you see around Philadelphia. It's only 23. They do sell for more. If you had the Schmidt bottle to put in the back, that would definitely make a difference but the reason I walked in here is because way down on the floor and sometimes that's where you find your best deals now this one is clearly Brazilian because it has the Brazilian motto on it but this is a butterfly wing tray 
It's $39 minus 20%. That's not a bad deal. Because it's so specifically Brazilian, I don't think it's for me because my customers like them to be a little more general and more about the butterfly wings. But it is a cute piece and the price is not bad at all. This space is 50% off. I like the old newspaper holder for the Lancaster New Era. Lancaster is a neat town in the middle of Amish country. And gosh, this is only $24. I have to admit that's tempting because it could be used at shows until I found a buyer for it. And these do fold, so this might come home with me. Aw, oh, what a nice sign this is. People have been so warm and generous to us here. This has been a wonderful experience. And let's take a look in their booth and see if we can find anything to return the favor with. I see a bowl I like down here. This one is Weller, and this is a lotus shape from the 1920s. It's got their round ink stamp on the bottom. I think that's a neat design. I just put this out in my level two video, my bonus video, and this one is the girl. I have the boy, the baby ring plaque, as they call them. Hummel means bee in German, bumblebee, and that is part of the reason that they use the bee mark for the Hummel figurines. There's the owl lamp, and look, a raccoon, too. I have this owl lamp for sale out in Washington State. They're asking a hundred with the discount. I think I'm asking about the same for mine. I have never seen the raccoon before. That is just hilariously fun. I like the gold horse here. This is more likely to fit in the car than that big raccoon lamp that I really want. And this one is $65 and then 65% off. So gosh, I'm that's kind of hard math for me. Let's see, that's going to make it uh, about... 22 24 dollars that's a pretty good price this is a nice twilight blue color and it is signed it is a fountain piece this is a piece made in the 1980s i thought that was an interesting color that they did it wasn't in their line very long but that was a popular shade at that time section b so there's another entire upstairs section this place really goes on and on it's quite extensive and they're expanding they're actually putting in about another dozen dealers in the space that we did the appearance today this gal just came up and introduced herself, Susquehanna River Valley Antiques. I like that they have the signage so that you actually have an idea who you're buying from. It's a great way to be able to brand your own business and still participate in the mall. There's the McCoy Rustic pattern. I have a collector looking for this, but I think he wants the traditional green, although I do like the green and brown on the ivory color as well. Wade Bait Bucket. Bait buckets sell fairly well. If the graphics were just a little stronger on that, I would buy that. That cat is about to discover what brain freeze is like. Well, they've got a lot of albums here. They have The Tubes, which were a band that were controversial in their time. Collectible now. Starbuck, Moonlight Feels Right. That was a big hit for them. I think their only hit, actually. The Temptations with Puzzle People. I don't remember that album. Redhead Kingpin and the FBI. The Rolling Stones. This is dirty work, so that's very 1980s. Look at those colors. It's nice to see a booth in an antique mall that has a lot of musical instruments. We don't see this all too often. Uh, the student model flutes are in the $100 range, $115 and $175. There's an auto harp or two. There's a saxophone here. You know, if you have a kid who's in school, Getting a used student model and having it reconditioned is generally a lot less expensive than buying a new instrument, so it's a great way to let them try and see what they think of it. I like this sunset colored little double string mandolin. And then we have a dulcimer here. I like dulcimers, they sell well in Kentucky. They sell well out in Washington State too, to tell you the truth. A bunch of Fenton hobnail. We are seeing interest in milk glass coming back again. And yet prices are still low on a lot of pieces. Look at this Fenton basket with the label for only $10. I have to admit, I probably should buy that. Something I learned recently about Fenton from a collector is that the way they finished off the handles on the baskets is an indicator of who made them. It's like a signature. This one has a waffle stamp on it. I'm not sure when they started doing that. 
This is a nice piece here. Water fonts were very popular as decorative accents in the 1950s and 60s, and they actually were made to work, although very few people ever have actually used them as such. This one is Fiori Blanco, which is white flower in Italian, and each piece is individually made and then fused together. So this is a fairly complicated thing to make. Okay, I gotta look at this part because they have stuff on sale. And something I like in here is this because it's Lean Air Alaska. Now we're not in the part of the country where people really would know or care about that. But up in Washington State, where I'm from, Wien Air Alaska was one of the Alaskan carriers for a long time, and they're not there anymore. So I think someone will think this is interesting, that it is an advertisement for them talking about someone crossing the Arctic Circle, and at half price, it's only going to be $9, so I think I'll take that. They've also got a lot of old football photography here, a bunch of Caltech. I'm sure this would all have sold if it was a team that was a little more highly regarded, but it is cool to look at. This is Beaded Grape Medallion, and this is a particular pattern that was done in the 1870s by the Boston and Sandwich Company and also by Boston Silver Glass Company. And they've got several pieces here. Here's an interesting juxtaposition. The little chalice there is considered a spooner because you would put spoons in it at the table and then people would take an individual spoon so that you didn't touch each other's spoon. The taller one is called a celery base and yes they would put stalks of celery in them. There's an open sugar bowl, the creamer, the domed piece is a butter dish with that acorn finial and the one in the back is probably a candy dish also with an acorn finial. I like the wall sconces here. These look like something from the 1930s. Nice to see a pair. The pair is marked at $100. Not a bad price. Yeah, that seems like a good price for that. <laughs> Enabler! <laughs> I know. I can't help myself. Believe me, we all share the sickness, but I love it. Yeah. <laughs> This piece illustrates part of the problem with sports collectibles. This is signed by Rick Dempsey, who was the MVP catcher in the World Series when the Baltimore Orioles won in 1983. And here's a big poster print of him with Sports Illustrated, and it's even signed by him, which is really great in its original signature. It's only priced at $75. The problem with sporting memorabilia is that generations pass and the current generation doesn't necessarily know who these people were even if they were important in their time. The golden era sports heroes are still golden, the Mickey Mantles and Jackie Robinsons of the world, but a lot of people who were really really talented, well another generation has supplanted them. So keeping interest in them is the trick if you are selling sports memorabilia. This is a nice piece here. This candle stick is a single. It's got decoration under the glaze with horses. It's very heavy and substantial because it's Royal Dalton. And there is the pattern name Autumn there. This is such a neat piece. Even though it's a single, I'm tempted to get it because it's only $45. This is going to be something that dates from about the 1920s. Oh, my friend the auctioneer and Disney collector in Kentucky does not have this garbage can. It's $40, which is about the right price, so I'm not going to get it for him. But I will definitely know to look for these out there in the wild. A Harvest Gold colored 1970s typewriter in perfect condition in the original box with all of the original owner's manuals. And it is priced at $75, which is pretty fair price for these. Here's a pretty vase would have sat in a metal bale, like an apern. I like the enameling. It is an older piece. It's only $15. I am now convinced that it's not for a car because the holder would have interrupted the pattern. So I think it is a piece from an apern. I want that. That's a good name for a mall space or a dealer, I think. This sugar and creamer look like Metlock's color stacks. I believe that's what this is, even though they're not marked. That means they're only $7 for the pair, and that's a pretty inexpensive price. Texaco gave out these Fire Chief hats as a promotion for kids back in the 
1950s and 60s and this one has everything it's got the eagle that's not broken off it's got the speaker in the face it has the speaker here you can speak into and it's got the strap and usually one or more of those things is missing or it's got a big chunk out of it so because this one is very complete the 75 dollars price on it is a good price for it I always thought they were neat looking. I like the fun way these folks are displaying all of this. You can actually get a big, big, big jar of different sides, and each jar is a little different, so you get a neat jar, and in them are all sorts of jewelry pieces, and they check them over to make sure they're in good shape, so you can pick out the ones you want to wear, and then you have a bunch of stuff extra for crafts, so uh, they're neat grab bags this way. I think it's a very nice way of doing jewelry for people, and a lot of fun to go through when you get home. Ring and ding ding do the Stegmeyer thing. I knew a man named Stegmeyer once, but he was not from Wilkes Bear, Pennsylvania. Stegmeyer Beer, on the other hand, that's where their hometown is. This is everybody's mother in the 1970s wool blend pantsuit, and they actually are very good quality. Finding them in good condition now isn't so easy, in part because a lot of people smoked, and the smoke smell sometimes was hard to get out or they'd be burned. So this one apparently was kept in very good shape. It's priced at $60, which is pretty reasonable if you think about what an outfit costs these days. Nice green color. This dealer seems to have a lot of interesting fashion, and I understand they do rather well with it. This is actually very sparkly and fun. This says that it is a vintage rainbow metallic dress, and this looks like something that was handmade, but well done. Only $18. This seems like a really good deal for such a large vase. This is Weller, it says. We'll look at the bottom, and there's the script signature for Weller Pottery since 1872. I mean, it's just a really nice, ample size, and this would have been made in the 1940s, shortly before they quit producing. I like the fact that the drapery is asymmetrical, but yet you could put it this way and you've got symmetry, so it gives you some different ways to use it. Let's see what this little space shuttle item is. It's ceramic. It shows it taking off in the cloud there. Columbia Fine Porcelain Franklin Mint. Okay, so this is ten dollars. You know, because I sell in Florida, that's probably worth buying. I like the horn on this. It's got the stand to hold it to. This is the original cylinder player it goes with. It's under 500, which for the whole set is actually pretty good for that particular model. And someone is asking Jocelyn her opinion for resale on something here. You know, it's funny, I noticed that when I first came in, and I kind of think that, I think it's an older lamp. I think. Yeah, I want to look at it up close to say for sure. Yeah, I think I think it's been redone. Yeah, it kind of looks like they have an old lamp that they did some revisions to. I mean, it's clearly been rewired, but the shade is the part I'm not so sure. I'm thinking the shade might be newer. It's the right style for the lamp, but... Uh, what are the clips like? That's what I'm thinking because um, let's see how it clips under here. Maybe we can tell that way. So we looked at it all of us up close and when we lifted the lamp and looked at the clips they actually looked legitimate from 1910 and so did the shade. We realized that they had only replaced the electric so they had new sockets but the shade was original, so the gal bought it, and she got a great deal on it. It was really fun to help her out that way. Ship bookends. These are a little different because they're three-dimensional. We see lots of ships, but not usually they're flat, so those are kind of neat. I like that lamp up there, George, the green one, the cut. She still has, well, oh, the bohemian yeah. glass. Yeah, that is nice with the cut to clear. With the right shade on that, that would look amazing. That would look really good. I like the one she got, though. I think that scenic one was actually, I think she got a good buy on that. Colton horse bookends. These are cool. I have a bookend fetish. This is Van Briggle down here. I wish there were two because that's a great pattern and it's only $40. This is interesting. It's made to look like linen. Royal Bay Ruth did that, but this is uh, tapestry. This is an English version. I like the uh, Bay Ruth better. It's not so glossy and shiny, but it is supposed to look like fabric. You can see that in the patterning there. 
the way they did the texture is kind of fun. Let's see where this is. Atlantic City, 1904. So this would have been a Shriners mug from a convention. Looks like that was fun. They have a whole lot of these city plates from various places, all priced about $20, which is about the right price now. These are Roland and Marcellus from about 1900. Which one? The pharmacy <laughs> jar? Yeah. Pat would like these. Oh, she would. Yeah. She goes so crazy over the kachinas, and oh, you know, know, she sells them well. I know. It, it, it is to me too. I mean, I like them, but I thought I understood them better. And then she shows me stuff that I'm like, oh, I wouldn't buy that. And she's like, oh, I got $300. And I'm just like, okay, Kat, you know some stuff. <laughs> she really does. Get a rhythm when you've been to a store a few times because you kind of know where you're going to find your stuff, right? There's this one, and then there's one down that way that I like to frequent. We can check this one out. Okay, cool. Thank you for showing me around. There's so much in this place and we were so busy, I'm never gonna see it all. I buy from this food. Oh yes, I saw some really cool glass animals and then one yeah. of the people who came to see you bought them and they're all at the counter. I'm like, oh, oh I like the snake. Yeah, isn't the snake That's cool? cool, it really is. I saw is. that the other day and I'm like, I don't think I've ever seen the snake before. No, I haven't either. I don't know who did that. I, was, I wasn't sure if it was Pilgrim because a lot of the other animals in here. So many of them are, but they did a really sort of pinched um, nose on their stuff mm -hmm. usually and that doesn't look quite like it but yeah pilgrim did a lot of this stuff i remember when we were repping for them the bunny. like this is probably them and that's probably them Isn't the snail pilgrim the is snail there? i think is yeah yeah i like that guy and that guy looks viking yeah yeah i uh, I'm just such a sucker for Viking glass. I really like it. <laughs> I think it's because it's so perfect, you know, because it's all from a mold, right? Uh -huh. So it's like, it's not going to have any flaws. It's, you know, more perfect than reality. <laughs> owl here, a red owl, but it looks like that. So. That They bought that too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She had like five of them in her cart. I'm like, oh, where'd you get those? Yeah. Yeah, I was just here, I think Monday or Tuesday, I think already they stopped because there's new stuff. Oh, that's great. Well, I mean, I can see. I know it's really busy today, obviously, but I get the feeling that they do business here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Which is great because it means you're going to see different stuff when you come in. There's the Blendo pitcher from West Virginia Glass. I love this one. The classic Lips phone. <laughs> <laughs> I almost walked right into it, and then I'm like, whoa. That is sufficiently creepy. <laughs> what are you? A hanging zombie. Well, yes. Okay. These glass fruit are a good price, but with the satin, if it goes bad, there's not really anything you can do to fix that. So unfortunately, I'm gonna to have to leave them even though I like the way they glow. Here's a store display that can be pretty useful because these all have little covers. So if you had a reason to keep parts sorted and needed the lids on them so that they wouldn't get mixed up with each other, well, that is a good one. 1950s out of a hardware store, or plumbing store actually. I like this piece of spangle glass in front of here. Which one? Oh, this one, yeah. Yeah, I kind of like that. It actually looks like a Fenton pattern from it the does. 60s. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they're saying Murano, but I don't think so. No, I actually walked by that the other day and I thought it was Fenton. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. I'm starting to put Fenton away because I'm going to do a, I'm going to do the uh, convention in Marietta in July, and oh, I've never been before. I've just always wanted to well, go there exciting. and see the factory. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I want to take a picture of this because this is so funny to me. I did not realize the courtship of Eddie's father had Shirley Jones, who was from the Partridge family, and Glenn Ford, and was a movie before it was a TV show. It was that TV show with um, it, it, when I was a really little kid. And it was a big deal because he was a widower and had a child and was remarrying like, you know, oh, wow, scandalous. he's how scandalous that, you know, your wife is dead and you want to be married again. It was <laughs> different era. Oh, it's Gonder. Oh. Yeah. When it looks sort of like something and you're not sure, it's almost always Gonder. <laughs> That's right. That makes sense. That's actually kind of cool. I had to do a double take. I was walking by. I was like, wait a second. What is that? And what surprises me, and yeah, and then right above it for 48, they have this huge piece of Zephyr Lily, and I know Roseville isn't hot like it was, but oh, it's damaged. Okay, that explains the price. <laughs> I was going to say that is too good to be true, and it was. 
Jocelyn said this is a booth that she likes and I can see why because they've got some really cool stuff. I think these are Rookwood, but they're a little too light. So they're probably a Japanese knockoff of Rookwood from the 30s, but they've got a great look to them. They've got some neat cloisonne, some older pieces. I like these Ram bookends back here from the 30s. Me and bookends. The alligator is aluminum, and if it was cast better, I would take it back to Florida, but it's missing its jaw, so something has gone terribly wrong for that. An alligator with only one jaw might have a little bit of trouble. Here's a neat piece that looks like bronze. I think it's spelter, though, because of the way it's painted, and it's a little lightweight. $90. They do have nice things here, though. Too weird. Yeah. <laughs> as soon as she says too weird, I'm like, I've got to see it. <laughs> Oh, yeah, this is one of these Balinese. I just sold a bunch of those. I had never had any before, really? and I bought a bunch from a guy who worked for Jim Henson, uh -huh. and he had this big collection of uh, puppets. They sold for me, and I think they're interesting. Yeah. I just, like, I worry about all the strings being tangled up and stuff and how that would affect well, the value. He, yeah, oh, it would be a huge problem, and what he showed me that I had no idea, um, because I've never bought marionettes before, is... You just take the thing when it's hanging up and uh -huh. you've got them all straightened out and you just wind it oh, really? while it's up and then it will stay that way. And then when you lift it up, it just unwinds itself. It just spins oh. itself open. Well, that makes and sense. that was really good advice. I wasn't going to buy them because I was like, I'll never be able to make these last. And he was like, oh no, it's easy. Let me show you. And it actually was. <laughs> this is a neat book slide here. I like this. $50. I wonder if they're having any sort of a sale in this place. Bill Lynch. This is a really good signature, and I don't know this ceramicist. 1983. I think those are very attractive. I'm going to have to look that one up. And it looks like they have another one by that person right here. This is when blue and tan colors were popular in decorating, and they're starting to be again. And they're 25% off. So the lovely Jocelyn is modeling this Meriden silver plate piece from the Victorian era, which I'm going to buy because it's $60 minus 25%. And I think it's really interesting. It's fancy. That's it's cool. fancy. It's fancy. And, you know, I'm hearing younger people saying that they're tired of Ikea stripped down everything and that they're liking fancy again. So I think I'm going to give it a chance. So this bell is about to wrap something that Drew found that's really cool. It's the USS Dauphin, and it is a Rick Weiscarver piece. And Rick Weiscarver is known for doing a lot of Native American style yeah, things. I did a video from uh, uh, Vainsville, Ohio last year that showed a bunch of his stuff. But this is something really different. This must have been something he was commissioned to do for someone who served on board that ship. And then Jocelyn's given this really neat folk art box. Well, I am so thankful to the folks who own the antique marketplace at Lemoyne for sponsoring me to do this appraisal fair. It was so great of Jocelyn to suggest it, and it was really fun seeing Dagny, and we got to go shopping the next day. We'll have video coming about that soon. Thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world. Please click the subscribe button below. Click the bell to be notified when new videos upload. Leave a comment below and hit thumbs up to like this video. Links to our online social media and our items for sale are in the description. This is George at The Antique Nomad. Bye for now.